Barcelona. Barcelona. Yeah. Empty here. But there is some pungent odors that waft through every once in a while. Oh, God. Guys that were down here hawking uh, some kind of reefer, but generally it's all shut down. Jeez, Brit. So stores are open. Some supermarkets. Uh, a tobacco store open. Pharmacies are open. Uh, but cops are stopping people in the street just right um, on this side of me, behind me. Just about an hour ago, four cops stopped two guys that were just walking down the street and asked where they were going. And they stopped a woman on the skateboard, asked her where she's going. If you say you're going to the pharmacy or the supermarket, they let you go. But I've heard some people getting thousand euro tickets for just like walking around. And yeah, it's serious. I think they're going to flatten the curve though. I see someone in the background now on a skateboard now. Get that. Somebody in the street there, get their, get their number, Brew, get their number. Or is he delivering your weed? Um, I don't know what she was doing, but uh, the local dealers seem to be doing a brisk business. A couple of the social clubs are still open. I don't know if it's window service or if it's um, be able to go in, but one of them has a DJ coming tonight, like everything's... Norm. <laughs> the one we went to is closed, and the guy who showed us around, he thinks he has it. I don't know what the status is of his test, but uh, yeah, they're really shutting things down. And now, have you have you considered getting a test or anything? Is it playing on your mind? Because uh, you know we've, we you've been in Europe how many weeks now? Well, you live in Munich, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if I had a test, I'd probably take one, but I don't want to go get some communicable disease jammed up my nose in some weird government testing lab. And, and you know, I check my temperature, I feel good, family feels good, so, you know, maybe leave the testing that is available to people who are really feeling symptoms, because, you know, we're just trying to self-quarantine, which actually seems to be working here. I mean, the streets are so empty, people are keeping distance. An old guy coughed next to me at the bakery. The lady at the bakery isn't wearing a mask. And the shops have mangoes for one euro and two avocados for one euro fifty. You know, it's just pretty cheap for around here. But I'm in the tourist zone. The suburbs, it's more big brother takeover controlled where you're, you know, you're driving or walking and they pull you over and give you that thousand euro ticket, apparently. France, is, uh, they got tickets to Russia's using facial recognition to track people who are violating quarantine, and busting down their door, so, you know. Um, and basically my favorite conspiracy theory would be the Russian Trump election, so chaos and discord. <laughs> you know, kind of a test run. Maybe something even weirder from the election. Convulsive diarrhea, red spots in your face. You know, after listening to this, I do believe in the 5G thing. It seems like, sure, that could compromise your immune system, a big blast of radiation, so. Anyway, that's that's the take in Barcelona. Wow. So, um, you you heard the story from Jaya that um, the the coffee shop the coffee shops are partially open for people to at least get some sort of medicine uh, takeaway. Did you see ever that happening at all as a local rule in Barcelona? I don't know if they've gotten it together enough to give a ruling. The private clubs are private. Yeah. Coffee shops. So. Yeah. I think they're all able to operate you know, the same if they want to, or close down, or, you know, it seems like the last thing the cops would be hassling with here would be the, you know, the private social clubs. They got skateboarders to hassle in the street and see if they are going to the pharmacy or not. Fuck, okay. All right, well, look, um, it's been, sorry, have you been hanging on for a long time? Because we are trying to get hold of you about half an hour ago, so I'm sorry if we, ruined your candlelit dinner in an empty street on the balcony overlooking 
somebody in quarantine five meters away. So um, I'm delighted to see your face and it's still smiling because uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is John Veet. We met John Veet in Europe a couple of years ago when he was freelancing for High Times magazine and we really respect him as a journalist. He says it how it is and when you're in his company, he's a fucking funny guy. He really is. So John, thank you so much for coming up the Hotbox and showing Apocalyptic Barcelona 2020. I'm wearing my Dabadoo t-shirt and remember, I was in a room full of stoners. Uh, I had 200 people in the same room doing bongs to get this T-shirt. And that was the night uh, before I saw you for the last time. So, I don't know, I'm, I'm sorry in advance, all right. <laughs> well, it, it right. seems like we've, you know, we've stimulated endocannabinoid systems. That's one way to ward off any and all treacherous, uh, invasive viruses and other bacteria. So. You know, hopefully we stay healthy and we're able to help people who aren't. You know? I'm worried about America in particular. I mean, that, the infrastructure there is so bad and the people are so dumb. Everyone's just running to the gun store there. So, you know, <laughs> what is it? Thinking about social distancing, in Florida, the governor said you can go to the beach, but you know, only in groups of 10 people or less. And it's spring break with young teenage, you know, young kids in their 20s partying their asses off, and old people. It's like the perfect Petri dish of, <laughs> oh my God, like, like, like you know, drunken, and it's all like 10 kids in one hotel room for the whole, whole week, you know, of just beer bongs and bongs and, you know, like, uh, American style. <laughs> well, remember, it, it, it's only 10 days ago that it was a hoax. It was fake news. Right. Exactly. Yeah, the, the Trump stumbles are really... I think will turn America into a second world country. I mean, it already is in so many places. People are shocked by how discombobulated the national infrastructure and bureaucracy is and how each state does its own crazy things with everything from guns to electric power to pollution. So now that there's this crisis, there's all the federal agencies have been eviscerated, replaced with Trump acting cronies. So, you know, it's going to take a long time for America to recover, and the spread will continue fast, I think. So, well, news. And, but I think most people will just kind of, like Trump said, get a cold and get it through it. You know, a lot of people will need respirators and die from it and you know a lot of people get it and not die it seems like it's kind of a fact of life now it's around and you know like car crashes and cancer it's here for a while if not forever you know maybe someone will get a nobel prize for getting rid of coronavirus in nine years anyway that's my grim problem. Well, yeah, thanks for that really happy parting shot. <coughs> Pull their mask down and then start smoking with the mask back and the cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> John, thanks for checking in with us. We'll, um, we'll stay in touch offline with your travels in Barcelona. Thank you very much, man. Signing off. Good to see you. Thanks Sweet. Thanks for all your uh, fun stories. We'll see you soon. Bye. Cheers. <laughs> um, uh, did you guys did you guys meet John when he was in South Africa? Yes. I think I know. I met him at Cantec, yeah. And he came to <coughs> didn't come up to Joe. <coughs> yeah he did Yeah he did uh Canatech and he stayed at the jazz farm for a few days. So it, we um did quite an extensive sort of sequence of interviews with him in Barcelona just as it was starting to turn into, you know, the kind of martial law thing that you see now. And you know Trenton from Cannabis Sessions in Cape Town?